Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart, and today we are talking about how Super Mario Party Jamboree has eased all my concerns. We've gone previews on the game, we've learned so much about the game as of late, and I'm currently thinking that this game will be addressing all the issues I've had with some prior Mario Party games, but also maybe going down as the best Mario Party yet. So that's what we're getting into today. But before going forward, let me ask that if you do enjoy my content, to please subscribe and hit that notification bell. So when they first announced Super Mario Party Jamboree, one of the big things I noticed was that the game was titled Super Mario Party Jamboree. In other words, the same titling as the first Mario Party game on Nintendo Switch, Super Mario Party. And the thing about that Mario Party game that while I did enjoy it, it I kind of took a little bit of issue with, is that it was very motion control dependent. You had to use the Joy-Cons throughout all the time. You couldn't use a Pro Controller. And this is something I didn't really appreciate. But what we have learned from the previews, according to both Nintendo Life and Nintendo Fangor, what they heard during their preview events is that you can turn off the motion controls. But also, Good Vibes Gaming, what they heard, what they were told actually, is that you can actually choose to use a Pro Controller, which eases my concerns because I prefer to use my Pro Controller most of the time. But at that point, the motion control mini games will not come up. So it seems like you have some options here. You can still use a Pro Controller. You, still, you can still turn off the motion controls. There are options there. I guess the one minor concern that's still there is that if I pick up a Pro Controller, I won't have access to all the mini games. But something else that's been a big point about this game overall is that it's huge, that it's the biggest Mario Party yet, literally, in terms of sheer content, and that includes over 110 minigames. So maybe there are some motion control minigames, maybe there's, I don't know what the exact number is yet, I don't think they've clarified on that, but if there's only 20 or 30 actual motion control minigames, there's still 80 or 90 non-motion control minigames, so if you really don't want to use your Joy-Con at all, and use the Pro Controller, you're still going to have a wide selection. But if you do use your Joy-Cons, you can still choose to not use the motion controls apparently. So to me, this is options. To me, this is good to hear. And it definitely makes me feel a bit more comfortable going into this one. Now, I personally preferred Mario Party Superstars over Super Mario Party, and a lot of that had to do with it celebrating prior Mario Party games, bringing back a lot of that old magic. And what we're seeing here with Jamboree, it seems to be a bit of a hybrid. We have some of the old maps returning, we have a lot of new maps. But what's really selling me here is just the extra levels of polish and content. A lot of what's been discussed with the main Mario Party mode is that it feels quick and snappy. And whenever I think about wanting to play Mario Party with friends, usually the thing that holds us back is how long or laborious it's going to feel playing through the typical board mode. And from what I'm seeing of the footage here, how it looks, it looks quick, it looks snappy, and that is definitely getting me more into this. But also, what's been discussed about these maps is that they feel a little bit more open, there's a little bit more options in terms of how you can go about exploring these maps, and it feels really good. Now, some of the things that I've noticed is that there's a greater sense of overall detail here. So, like in this mini game here, we can see that there are certain characters that are standing on a platform to reach the table, but then there are others that are taller that don't need it. I appreciate that level of detail. Or in this pic here, you'll see that Goomba is being boosted by a little platform here so he can reach the wheel to be high enough to play the actual minigame. There are just little things like this that just show that there's a lot more effort put into this game. And the animations look fantastic. Visually, the game is strong. And even the UI seems to have been improved. Seeing all the stats at the bottom is a lot more clear and we have a better view of the overall game. And it does not look like we've lost any features here, it's all simply been made more efficient. So that's all fantastic stuff, but something else we've learned that has me pretty excited about the main mode here is that there's this new mechanic that is the Jamboree Buddy. Essentially you can get an ally, and the one we saw was for Donkey Kong, and when this happened, Yes, one player has this advantage in getting them, however, everyone can still technically compete for them for this entirely different separate minigame. So I really like that angle there, that minigame is going to be hectic and frantic, and everyone's going to be doing everything they can to win, even if there's one player that has a bit of an advantage there. It's cool stuff, but what also is cool stuff are some of the other modes. 
It looks like they are taking the online this time around a bit more seriously. Something that I found curious is that they are automatically including, at least in the version that's coming to here in North America, three months of Nintendo Switch Online right off the bat. So that's very neat that that's there for those who haven't gone started with NSO yet. But it's the online modes that have me really, really intrigued here. So seeing what they've shown off so far for Kupathalon, it looks really fun. It's a 20 player online mode where you play different mini games on one side where you're collecting coins and there's different rounds, but in real time you see that everyone is moving up across the map, depending on how many coins you're getting. And between rounds there are different mini games that can set you back, so there's a lot of back and forth here, I think this is going to be really fun. But they've also introduced another mode that seems pretty unique, which is the Bowser Kaboom Squad mode, where in this one, you're not competing against everyone, but rather working together in 8 player squads, and you can move about this town-like area, collecting bombs, throwing them at this giant version of an imposter Bowser, and every round there's different mini games to play that give you different power-ups that you can use against Bowser or to help out your teammates. So there's a different strategy here, there's different abilities here, it's an entirely different mode. And there are varying difficulties. So it seems like a fun diversion and because there's other difficulties, I can see myself playing with some friends who do one board for a night. We're kind of done with it, but we're not totally done with the evening yet. So I could easily see jumping into this Kaboom Squad mode where we all work together and do something a little bit different. Maybe the last time we weren't able to beat it in normal mode, so we'll try it to beat it in a higher difficulty. It's just some good variety here. And from everything that I'm seeing about this game, there is the variety, there is a lot of content, a lot of mini games, a solid selection of maps. They are also introducing both Ninji and Pauline into the roster. The animations, the visuals, the polish, the attention to detail, it's all there. I don't think I've been this excited for a Mario Party game really ever. Maybe not since I was a kid where I just thought it looked cool because it was... Mario playing on a board when it was a new novel concept. So this might be actually a pretty big deal. But what do you all think? Are you excited for Super Mario Party Jamboree? Let me know in the comments below. This is Andres Restart. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.